Hello, Capricorn. Welcome to your March 1st through 15th Soul Session. I am Barlow. If you're new and if not, okay, <laughs> if you're family, welcome back, my friend, and whatnot, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and jump into you guys' cards and see what's going on for you all for the first of the 15th. Interesting. So first card out, we have the King of Swords in the reverse, and this is followed by the Six of Cups which is reminding me sort of kind of of Sanja's reading a little bit. Now, child, with the King of Swords in the reverse, okay. I'm not gonna say that this is, uh, I mean, I would hope, I would hope that this isn't representing you guys, um, Capricorn, but I'm feeling with this particularly uh that this is a masculine energy you know what i'm saying like typically with um you know core cards when i'm reading generally on youtube unless my intuition says different and my intuition is saying different now this feels specifically like a masculine energy and this could be you know a boss it could be a father figure it could be you know a partner it could be a myriad of different people but i mean this ain't a nice person child this this is like someone who's very uh manipulative a person who's like a a good old gaslighter you feel what i'm saying um how can i say it snake oil salesman uh what do they call that like someone who has like a, a silver tongue you know what i'm saying um just a very unscrupulous person let's say it that way but this person's energy is following you into the month of um March from February. And of course, with this being followed by the Six of Cups, this very well could be someone from your past. You feel what I'm saying? Another way that I can see this, Capricorn, is that you guys are being affected by this person in some way, shape, form, or fashion. For some of you guys, oh, that's interesting. For some of you guys, this really could be a father figure or someone who was prominent in your life. It could be an ex partner. You feel what I'm saying? And it's similar to me with Sag. Their first card out was um, the Six of Cups. But for me, it's either, if I were to separate y'all into two different groups of Capricorns, there's one group of you where this is a person who literally followed you from February into now, meaning that this person is still very much um, a part of your life, Right. And the other group of you, this person lives rent-free in your head. <laughs> Meaning, like, this person being this gaslighting, you know, manipulator, you know, you, they don't take personal accountability for stuff. Having an argument with them is literally impossible. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Because it always ends up coming back to you somehow or some way, shape, form, or fashion. You feel what I'm saying? Um so it's either they're you know living rent free in your head or this person is still like physically in your life right but the next card that came out for you guys is the fountain card and this card is unique to this particular deck the fountain tarot and it's like an octave above uh the world card so it's really talking about beingness and you know connecting with the higher truth connecting with your authentic self, being in alignment with spirit and things of uh, the sort. So it's more or less like learning all of your lessons and, you know, ascending from sensory consciousness to like Christ consciousness or collective consciousness or whatever term we feel uh, comfortable utilizing. You feel what I'm saying? So what I garner from this in the first seven days, the battle that my Capricornian people are dealing with is either... Because, of course, all of us are at the crossroads. Those of y'all who are members, or even those of you guys who aren't members, if you just subscribe to my channel, if you look on the main page on my channel, you can see the member videos. And typically, you know, it's a picture of me <laughs> doing, you know, YouTube thumbnail stuff. <gasps> right? <laughs> but this month, I felt very compelled uh, to put a particular picture um up and it's a picture of a crossroads and that particular picture i chose it because i was literally googling something else entirely and um my best friend is a psychic medium and um i had a dream about her many years ago and i would always try to describe the dream to her and i just so happened to come across that picture and i was like oh my gosh that's exactly what it looked like in you know my dream or whatever 
And uh, knowing that the whole collective is at this crossroads, uh, some of it having to do with, you know, Saturn going into Pisces and whatnot on the 7th of uh, this month, which is my other best friend who is also a Pisces birthday. Happy birthday, star. I don't think that she would be watching a Capricorn. No, wait. Oh, my gosh. She does have Capricorn in her chart. Hey, girl. (laughs) But anyway... But um, it's like, that's why that, that I chose that picture because I felt it was appropriate because all of us are at a crossroads. So the whole thing is here. And what my guys are telling me to say, I'm just going to say it, Capricorn. I don't know how y'all going to feel about it. It's not anything you haven't heard me say on this channel before, unless you knew. If you knew, welcome. Sorry. Ahead of time. But what this would be saying to me, whether this person is presently in your life or they were once upon a time in your life and living rent-free in your head presently, this particular person has uh, placed themselves into the position. I think that they were that way prior to you, but I feel like you've uh, allowed it. This person has inadvertently become like the God of your life in a sense, because, and what I mean by that, for those of you who aren't familiar with how it is that, you know, I teach these spiritual principles that I teach via tarot on this particular channel is when you allow a person to become the God of your life, think about like God in the greater context, right? So God is like, you know, author of the universe, all the things, major creator, blah, 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 right? There's all religions that are made after this particular God, right? And I mean, if it's monotheistic, but anywho. (laughs) So you think about the fact that there's people who alter the course of who they are superficially, and aligned to you know specific rituals like me growing up catholic it's lent right now i still you know i don't eat meat on fridays you know it's a thing you know what i'm saying or you know whatever thing you adhere to and the reason that you're doing that is for whatever your religious belief system is for this you know benevolent figure right that determines i mean if you're in you know most of the the i mean not judaism but you know in uh islam and um in christianity whatever facet of christianity whether it's catholicism or you know the myriad of different uh protestant sects of uh christianity uh that you know there's a heaven or hell to go to you know what i'm saying so you want to be on your best behavior you want to behave the right way and say the right things and do the right thing so that you can ultimately go to heaven right so you alter your behavior in hopes of you know god thinking that you're good enough or you know jesus not telling you depart from me i never knew you you know what i'm saying So you alter your behavior for this benevolent figure based on this belief system, right? To try to gain this person's approval so you don't spend an eternity in torment, right? Is the general uh, synopsis, right? And this is, you know, me still a licensed minister giving a quick, you know, synopsis of such things. But anywho, we're thinking about in the context of that, but when we bring this down to making a human being your God, it is the same concept. It's the fact that, and I often see this with people who are in relationships or children of people who are narcissists, right? Where you now create yourself not in the image of a benevolent, you know, creator. You create yourself or recreate yourself in the Im- the image of a malevolent human, right? That has somehow put themselves into a position in your life where they are telling you how you should, ought, or supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? And that's whether if it's a particular person or if it's a collective of people. (laughs) You feel what I'm saying? Because we have a great deal of that um, happening in our our day and time. It can be a whole collective of uh, people, whether it's cancel culture. Those are people who have become the god of other people's lives because it's the thought of being politically correct and the fact that you have to you know, uh, not speak your truth in fear of being canceled. Canceled culture would be like a hell, proverbially speaking, in the, you know, social media realm. If you think about it, even in uh, the the new hot thing on the streets, if you think about it in the context of the manosphere, right, you have a collective of people who are saying that this is the standard of how women should ought supposed to be, right? And if you don't fit this particular standard that this, you know, collective, you know, has said, right, then you're going to be condemned to hell of getting a dog and dying alone. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? 
So it's more or less whenever you start altering your behavior, your personality, you start muting facets of yourself. And mind you, this is not a random tangent. This is still very much me talking about these first three cards in your spread, right? So whenever you're altering who and what it is that you are, right? Because you're being manipulated or gaslit, be it a person or we're speaking a group of people, that is when you make that person the god of your life because your salvation is contingent upon you falling in favor with this particular person. Now, what I can say is the third perspective of the two examples that I've given you is both of them are completely and utmostly farce and why I call myself the woke therapist. I can't even say call myself that because my clients started calling me that where the name came from <laughs> how you transcend that particular didactic timeline is by realizing the third way that of which is the truth which is meaning that you never have to prove yourself to god to make god love you nor do you have to prove yourself to humanity so those are two distorted perceptions of these things you feel what i'm saying it's understanding like transcending this is the realization which is what why i feel that this fountain card is see how i do this whole thing because we're talking about these two right here you feel what i'm saying this is like the first and the seventh of march that we're talking about here but i feel the whole thing with this is um in the first week of march you guys are being offered a sense of deliverance because i feel in some sense or another that capricorn people are um you know <laughs> like uh enslaved if you will to a child of a lesser god whether it be a concept a group of people or a particular person that was in your past or in your present and you're being offered an opportunity for deliverance for you to transcend this particular you know antiquated timeline right and to ascend to the director's chair of life for you to be able to be free of all the bondage of such things, right? So this is more or less with the Six of Cups and this King of Swords in the reverse, even if that King of Swords in the reverse is representing your own mindset because it's literally possible to gaslight yourself. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like you leaving this past behind for a future that of which leads to eternity. You feel what I'm saying? And not eternity in the sense of like heaven, but it's you transcending sensory consciousness. How did Capricorn's reading get so deep and metaphysical? I have no idea. I am just the messenger. You feel what I'm saying? Anywho, going into the second week of March, the first card out that you guys have, child, look, we have the Empress in the reverse. That's Taurus and Libra energy. Come on with it. Then we have the world child look. Spirit trying to get y'all to learn some lessons. I always say the world card as well as the wheel of fortune. Y'all don't have the wheel of fortune. Y'all just have the world. That relates to fixed signs. So that's fixed signs, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, as well as Aquarius. And the last card that you guys have, come on with it, Dagnab, son of a gun. We have the seven, seven of the cuppies in the reverse. So now we're transitioning from what the call is in the first half of the week. It's like leave behind this narcissistic person, past person, social construct, you know, society, group, cult, whatever the hell it is we talking about, child. You feel what I'm saying? And it's almost like you being wooed by spirit to like come into the light, Caroline. Step into the light, Caroline. You feel what I'm saying? To come into the second week of March with this Empress and the reverse, and that's letting me know what state of being that you guys are in at present. With the Empress and the reverse, that's like barrenness in the most proverbial sense. You feel what I'm saying? It's not feeling fruitful. It's not feeling that, you know, the creative inspiration that you once upon a time had is not really matriculating into anything. In the 3D sense, it could be that, you know, um, you could be making a goo gobs of money, right? You could be making money, but it's like your heart isn't in it or your heart isn't in the job that you're doing. Or if you're creating and putting content out, you feel that it's missing something because there is no breath of life in it. There's no soul in it. So there's a barrenness that's... Um, reverberating if you will whether it's in your consciousness and your emotional space and in your finances like there's some sense of hollowness to it and it's more or less a call to bring life to it now what is that life that we're talking about that takes me back to the card for the seventh that of which would be the fountain card right it's more or less with the empress the reason why the empress's proverbial garden would ever you know be barren because if we think about you know right away tarot here if you look at the Empress card closely, you see there's like a little river, 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's going through her little gardens, like her little Nile River. You know what I'm saying? But we're talking about the fountain, okay? If we don't go to the river, come on, somebody, amen, right? <laughs> if we don't go to the river, if we don't go to the well of God, from which we drink of and shall never thirst again. Amen. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to shout. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. You feel what I'm saying? If we don't go to the fountain, then everything that it is that we create devoid of our true essence or our true nature, that of which is an aspect of God, you know, Allah, whatever it is that you want called the divine. You know what I'm spaghetti monster God. I don't know. Whatever it is that you call the divine, higher power, whatever the case. Mega mind, I don't know, right? If you cut yourself off from life, <laughs> that of which is what God would represent, then of course you're going to feel barren because you can still make shit tons of money. You can still write books. You know what I'm saying? You can still make videos. You know what I'm saying? If you were a YouTuber, you could do thousands of podcasts. You could do buku stuff but it's gonna be missing something. Like it just doesn't have that soul in it. Even if you're a songwriter, a singer, it's like you could make buku songs, but it just don't have that oomph in it. You feel what I'm saying? It can sound beautiful, but it's just missing something. Or like, you know, we say in the South, it's like, you know, it's missing you putting your foot in it. You know what I'm saying? It don't make you wanna slap your mama. You feel what I'm saying? So I feel next with the world card being here and saying that's really what the lesson is that you guys are learning, not just in the first half of the month, but I feel the path that you've been on because all of us are coming to a crossroads at this particular time. It's like there was a lesson that was intended for you guys to learn to where you're putting too much time, energy and effort either in less than stellar things that past people have said to you. Meaning that, like I said before, you've created yourself in the image of this particular past person, not meaning that you're trying to be like them, but whatever they said was wrong with you or faulty about you, you've created yourself in a way that's in opposition to whatever that person said was wrong with you, or you've created yourself in opposition to your past pain, which is a clear statement that you're disempowered to it. You know what I'm saying? That means that now that person, situation, circumstance, whatever the case, like I was saying, is the God of your life. So you aren't, you know, and this is me putting my therapist hat on a little bit. <laughs> a lot of times we see ourselves as being empowered because we've altered. And I literally wrote a whole manifesto <laughs> about this on Instagram not my tarot therapy Instagram on the woke therapist Instagram. It's probably one of my last posts because I'm a horrible uh, YouTuber because I never post. <laughs> but I think it's probably like the last post that I put up and it's a picture of me and it's like a long manifesto. And I literally talked about something like this. Like when we make all of these changes in our life in opposition to something that's happened past tense, it's like you're going to wake up one day and find yourself as a complete stranger, right? Because all of these things that you've done, and this is very similar to what I said to Sagittarius, it's like all of these alterations that you've made to your personhood to prevent yourself from being hurt the way that you were, or screwed over that you were past tense, and you thought that these were things that were keeping you safe, and these are actually things that have been like, you know, killing you softly, if you will. Hopefully I don't get demonetized for saying that. But that's the whole premise of this lesson, right? Because that's pretty much telling me that, like I said, whether this king of swords is how it is you treat yourself in your head, if this king of swords is your daddy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your mama, ex-boyfriend, your mama, I really do feel like it's a masculine energy. If it's a, you know, ex-partner, you feel what I'm saying? Or if it's someone that's in your life now, this person is what's standing between you and your deliverance, Right. Like everything it is that you, like the person who was birthed from this connection with this particular person, that false self, if you will, is what's preventing you from aligning with your authentic self because you unknowingly are so far off track from the authentic self because it's almost like scabs that have built up. You feel what I'm saying? And the reason why with the Empress in the reverse, that feeling of barrenness that you guys may be feeling at this particular point in time, not saying all Capricorns is just who resonate with this. You know what I'm saying? 
But that barrenness or that lack of inspiration or lack of creativity or not feeling fulfilled, like all of that is coming from a place of saying that this is the main thing that's missing. Your garden isn't growing because there's no everlasting eternal waters that are watering it. You feel what I'm saying? But this entire cycle that you guys have been in with the world was for you to learn that lesson. You know, I said in one of my books uh, that my life without God is like Kool-Aid with no sugar, bitter. You feel what I'm saying? It's like outside of everything else, like nothing else in life matters to me or makes sense to me other than God. It's like nothing else makes sense. Like that's the only thing that has made life make sense for me up to this point in my life is literally my belief system because outside of that, I have nothing else. I, I don't see anything. Nothing in this world makes sense. And I think without that, you would feel like you're drowning in a vortex of just broken people and chaos. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like having that connection with a higher power and not just the connection. It's having that connection and understanding how to apply all of the spiritual wisdom that we're intaking on a regular basis to your life every day that completely transforms how it is that you maneuver and how it is that you move. And you really don't have to fraternize with a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world today because none of that stuff would even apply to you anyway because that's for people who don't have that. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? It's like they're trying to make sense out of nonsense as opposed to aligning with the wisdom. And with the seven of cups in the reverse that you guys have as your card for the 15th, that's the whole premise. It's you guys coming back to your true origins. And by the midpoint of the month, like remembering like, dog, I can totally see how this has been showing up for me and you're seeing clear. So instead of you being confused or feeling like you're separated in all of these different facets or seeing how it is that, you know, you're sold out to this particular group of people, person, whatever the case is more or less you by the 15th, taking your power back and you having clarity. And it's like you getting back into alignment with uh, yourself. You feel what I'm saying? And the divine and ooh, chow <laughs> at the bottom of the deck, why all of this is happening. You guys have the seven of wands in the reverse. So um, I don't know if you guys have Sag in your chart, I said something similar to, who did I do before you? Who was that? Sagittarius. I did Sag before you guys. And I was telling them, even if they didn't have cancer in their chart to watch cancer's reading, because it was the same kind of thing. And then the chariot came out and I was like, Sean, no, you lying. That's a cancer cord. <laughs> but I would say for you guys, I think it would behoove you to watch, um, Sag, because I feel like this would kind of go more in depth to give you like a different perspective, even if you don't have it in your chart. Because with the seven of wands in the reverse, that's saying to me, you guys have kind of gotten out of your God space, right? So it's kind of feeling, um, how can I say it? Uh, it's feeling almost like at the will of your situation, like feeling like you're being attacked or everything's coming at you or, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you have bad karma or you're being punished somehow and not really understanding why things aren't working out right. But there's a need to shift your perspective because once again, like why I say with the seven of wands when it's in the reverse, is you stepping outside of your God space because it literally is. <laughs> because whenever you're in alignment, you have a higher vantage point. So no matter what it is that's thrown at you or how people try to come at you, it's not going to work because you just, you're in the director's chair of life. I talked to Sag about that. It's like you have a higher vantage point. So it's like, even if people are coming at you sideways, you know what I'm saying? You're not really tripping about it. Even if somebody tried to mess over you, you still really not tripping because it's like, if I didn't see it and they still messed over me, it's like, okay, there's a lesson that I need to learn in this. And it's not to completely shut myself down. Right. So it's more or less all of the, you know, adverse effects or whatever it is that you guys are feeling or whatever it is you feel like you're getting punished for, or if you feel like buku people coming at you or people ganging up on you or like, you know, whatever the case, whatever it is that you guys are feeling the whole thing is shifting your perspective to see that whatever the issue or problem is or how you feel people are coming at you now or how it is you feel that you're being punished, that's a symptom of the deeper problem. The deeper problem being that you've stepped outside of your God space. So you stepped out of alignment with yourself, right? Like the for my Bible scholars out there, <laughs> you stepped outside of the hedge of protection, right? When you step outside of the proverbial hedge of protection or your God space, as I call it, 
shit is going to go awry. And the reason why it's going awry is because it's to like say, hey, warning sign, you're out of alignment with yourself. Another way we could look at this if we looked at it from um, like a solely psychological perspective, this would be like coming out of alignment with your core values, like your three main core values. That's self-betrayal in so many words. When you come out of alignment with your core values, you're going to feel like everything's off kilter. You're going to feel like not right with yourself. You're going to feel like something's just kind of like off. You feel what I'm saying? But that's a symptom of a deeper problem. It's saying, hey, self, I violated one of my boundaries. Like that's one of my major deal breakers. And I still went along with that. So it's not necessarily about succumbing to it or being like, oh my gosh, you made a mistake or like, you know, whatever the case, right? It's just to recognize it, to make a decision to course correct and alter one's behavior, make a different choice. It's just that simple. So all of this stuff is happening, Capricorn, because it's bringing to your attention that in some sense or another that you have made someone or something the God of your life. And it's getting you to come back into alignment with your authentic self and truth. You feel what I'm saying? And learn the lesson from this so that even if it does happen again, you're able to apply it because you know, okay, I've been here before. Let me course correct, right? So I hope and pray that that makes sense. Y'all got a little deep, you know what I'm saying? But let me know what you think in the comments. As always, I love your freaking face. The other half of this part two is gonna be out on the 15th on all of my membership platforms, Patreon, YouTube members, and my network, Our Sanctuary. So if you're about that life, follow me on over there on the 15th. But if not, I still love your freaking face and I will see you guys sooner than later, my friends.